Good morning. It's 1148 a.m. It is February 7th. It is smack dab in the middle of the week. It is Wednesday. Happy, what they call, hump day. <laughs> I hope all is going well for those who are working right now and just hoping that, you know, that you can get to the weekend. You're almost there. Anyway, so, you know, um, let me see. What did I do this morning? Um, I did have to go around to the store get milk and stuff like that. <laughs> And, you know, um, I, I walk, okay, I walk if, um, you know, my son uses my car, so there's time for it. And I'm, I don't put up a fight about it, I, I don't really care, that's how laid back I am, I really don't care. Anyway, so, um, you know, if I have to walk, I, I will walk. Um, I know back when I lived in Lancaster, people would see me walking, like, because I live on the east side, and people were like, I saw you like walking on the west side, you know, and I was going to ask you if you wanted to ride, but, and there were times where people did pull over and say, hey, did you want to ride? And I've always felt like I can't trust people, you know what I mean? So I just like walk, you know, crazy distances, you know, and so um, I'm used to walking. And I know that when I was getting targeted, people were kind of bitching about me walking and stuff because it was like the catty girl thing, things are going on and stuff, bullying, whatever. Um, you know, I think I, I do have a very old-fashioned way of entertaining myself. You know, I had mentioned before, you know, I love sewing. I, I get really excited when I look in my sewing box. I get, like, really happy and, like, joyful. And I get excited when I can do sewing projects. Like, I, my son just brought in some um, forgotten fabric pieces that I had purchased about two years ago. Uh, I was making slippers out of felt, and then I was also had some cotton fabric in there, um, different colors and stuff. And I kept thinking, oh my gosh, I'm so happy, you know. Um, yeah, these are the things I like to do. Um, I don't know, you know. Um, I was thinking about, you know, how the workplace is set up, and um, you know, because it does raise the question, you know, is all work, you know, all employment, like, you know, based on like trafficking. Is it all? <laughs> I know that I've hired people in the past and, um, you know, I based it off of their resume and their skills and stuff like that. So I, I don't know, but it seems like a good majority of it is. I guess we can pay if all of employment was based on a targeting system. Like I said, you know, college educations would be a waste of time, <laughs> basically, because you're going to be basically where you're going to be anyway, right? But, um, but, you know, I, I understand that, you know, when, you, when you're dealing with things like employment manipulation, it can change so much in a person's life. And this is one of the reasons why sometimes they do it, because they're, you know, they're trafficking you in a certain direction, wanting you to do certain things. I think what disturbs me the most and what makes things the most unbearable is sometimes, you know, um, like I mentioned, the behavioral modification <laughs> techniques that <laughs> they desperately try to act out on me. Um, yeah. <laughs> You know, um, like, the, like they would give, like, you know, a speaker would come in or whatever. And he, I knew what was going on. Um, you know, that, that's, that's torturous, you know. I, I, maybe I'm old school, you know, maybe I am. And maybe a bit naive, you know, especially in the world that we live in. But, you know, I, I always believe that the, the employment sector was basing it off of those things. Like, you know, somebody who knows how to do the job. If you pass the test, you pass the test. Or, you know, whatever. You know, or, the, you know, how many years experience do you have or whatever. Um, I know they flipped a lot of the scripts when I moved here and they were starting, like, doing heavy targeting on me. Um, so much so that I ended up getting blacklisted. And it's, it's been very, um, what do you call it? frustrating when you're dealing with a targeting situation because you know I like I said I moved here just to get like a little simple job and raise my son and that was it you know and technically even though I would say my my um my uh my background in what I used to do um it, it I would say it is complicated because if you really look at it with a fine tooth comb you know I had a lot of like weird hop skips and jumps in throughout my education mainly because of the, the targeting um, but you know I've always tried to do the best I could you know and I, I knew that there was a lot of other people who had similar choppy type histories and stuff like that that they just try to overcome it and they try the best they can to make the best of what they have you know um, some people struggle and I'm, I would say that I'm one of them mainly based on the root of this issue um, and when you start to think about it, I start to think about it, and then that's when I start spouting off, you know, because I get 
angry, it's like, how many times do I have to point something to something to drive it, you know? But um, I, I was thinking about, you know, um, just, you know, as I was walking home, I was just thinking you know, about, you know, um, how the workplace, you know, can affect a person's life and, you know, how it, it really needs to be less toxic to be, um, to be bearable, you know what I mean? Um, I understand, you know, you can't eliminate trafficking, um, 100%, it's, it's, it's impossible to do, you are going to do it, um, but there's certain things that, like, perps and stuff like that, uh, whether they're well-intentioned or some of them are malicious, some of it's well-intentioned, okay, and then there's some people who I was being trafficked, um, uh, trafficked by who were um just outright malicious catty and then the whole purpose probably for me being there in the first place was to you know basically destroy my life or convert me into something that i would never want to be uh but this is the sort of stress that a lot of people uh deal with when they're when they're being targeted they're you know it's a lot of things uh the the behavior techniques and all you're trying to do is do a job and they'll try to convince you that you know in order to like carry out your job um you know you need to have this certain persona and and this sort of thing i understand that there should be a professional look you know um, a professional vibe uh to a person i also do understand that there should be um somebody who is well versed in their skill okay i i totally get that um and uh, obviously somebody who can demonstrate that skill okay that's important whether that be training um entering things in you know uh whatever you know the daily task of the nightmare workplace right <laughs> those things were supposed to matter i remember like you know because i was really when i first got my first job in at, at air force base um you know i knew that i was very like basically coming up from nothing i had nothing but i was taking advantage of every opportunity i can get because i wanted to be independent and i wanted to take care of my son so i um you know started reading every little bit of pamphlet that even didn't even pertain to me i wanted to understand like employment laws how does it work how do you base your employment on how do you base on hiring and these were the standards based on the united states government at the time right so i was reading all of this stuff because it was important that i understood what my rights were okay i would i seriously need to stress how important it is for people to understand their rights when they enter the workforce okay because a lot of things happen and you carry the stress and you go home and you're sleeping and you're wondering why does this affect me so bad why is this causing me like you know nightmares night sweats traumas all this other stuff is because somebody is work, working in a, in, a, in a way that they're violating laws that's causing you stress and it's chipping away at you little by little by little it's these things are written into law because we have rights and we have to be able to make sure that they're upheld so that that there can be a real balance and unfortunately you know i would say a lot of workplaces this is not me trying to like bring up anybody i'm not going to call out names okay because i really do get the message that something is going on in the air where it's just time to move on from that subject matter okay i think i've said everything i need to say towards the people that got involved in this but um when it comes to the workplace you know how to prevent <laughs> these sort of um this sort of uh harassment this sort of like mobbing this sort of um setting up this sort of uh bullying that goes on in the workplace um you know it, it, it's like i made a video uh i don't know maybe a year or two ago about like you know how 79 percent of stalking occurs in the workplace and what what the thing is is like you know why i think some people didn't take my situation seriously is because of a lot of the people who were behind the the targeting okay because some of these people are like important which is cool okay it's cool okay but uh but they also don't understand that that <laughs> what it is to me experiencing being targeted um it is like all i know is is that i'm feeling somebody who has always struggled to survive i've always struggled to survive that's it i've always and i've tried very hard and i based this off of the guidelines on the law that i knew that i had rights you know what i mean and i knew back in anchorage base they did make some sort of concessions for me to work there okay 
And that was my history. I write, I, I start reading, like, how do people read, I can enter into the workforce? And even though I had very little, I still pass through, okay? Um, I'm able to, um, to perform work, okay? Not like the, the job, the task. And I was one of those people, and I had spoken to several other people who um, suffered workplace issues and stuff like that, but they got by on their experience, and that was what they highlighted mainly. Um, so anyway, um, you know, I, I was just somebody who was trying to raise my kids, okay? Um, but I know that there was some sort of like competition, and probably this was a competition um, of... I don't know. I thought it was for me from mainly from my um, my uh, adoptive family, but I do understand probably because it was this sort of weird competition with this twin that I have. Um, I don't know, but anyway, I know that the, that was a lot of the issue, and suddenly things that were available what time to someone like myself started getting. And I know I know bachelor's degrees and stuff like that are like they've been promoted, you know, or or um, what do you call it? Uh, encouraged for a very long time, but Bakersfield has, was always known for the most, I mean, the most undereducated community in California. You see what I'm saying? Because I strategically moved here because I knew that I had probably better working methods than, or um, ethics than the majority of the people here. Okay. I figured I would be a better candidate than anybody here. I mean, that's not, that's not me putting the community down, but I'm, what I'm saying is, is that, you know, I understood that I could do the job and the rent was cheap. And this is what I was trying to do to set up my life for me and my son, okay? Um, so, and then I ended up getting sucked up in this whirlwind, you know? <laughs> this crazy whirlwind thing. And, um, but, you know, I noticed that, you know, uh, the, the mobbings and stuff that I, I had dealt with, um, you know, I, I think what makes workplace hell, the biggest form of hell in our lives is the fact that, um, Unfortunately, the thing that uh, tears us down the most is the thing, or the thing that destroys us the most, the thing that uh, exhausts us the most, the thing that we resent the most, uh, is unfortunately our job. And and if you don't, if you don't go to your job, then you know you're not gonna have a place to live. You know your kids are gonna go hungry. I mean, you know we know that, that we we have this responsibility. But it almost seems like it's goddamn drudgery. You know what I mean? It was just a nightmare um, having to, and it could, it didn't have to be that way. But the thing is, I was a clone. I was a clone, and I was being, you know, uh, followed, monitored, and trafficked for um, not just, you know, my work life, but my um, my um, school years as well. Um, and I didn't. And I always felt like I was running from something. I knew that the kids bullied me in school, and, and I knew that, um, uh, I mean, for no apparent reason. Like, they would be nice one day, and then they would just, like, flip out the next, you know? And it was always like that. And I would get, like, jobs and stuff when I was younger, and I'd start working them, and they would just, like, start getting really sick and weird. And um, I, I thought all my life that, um, that it was just because of me being um, a little bit, to uh what do you call it serious maybe um i know people used to think that i was kind of hoity tweety or something like that when i was doing up, you know but um and i thought you know i i did i did kind of sense that it was a little bit of racism because i felt as though there were some people who felt intimidated by my intelligence um but um i never let people think make me think that um that they, I don't know. I, I just never let it get to me. I just always kind of looked at it as kind of an isolated case from the last time. I never realized that all of it was not isolated. It was all, you know, this like bullying campaign on poor little Maria, right? Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I just keep thinking in my back of my mind, you know, I, I don't see anything positive about the workplace. You know, um, I think it's too, they, they allow too much infiltration. And I understand, like, you know, the, for the people, the cool people who, like, did what they did and stuff. Um, I, I get it, but at the same time, you know, it causes a lot of um, competitiveness. It causes a lot of, you know, jealousy and, and that sort of stuff. And then I end up getting, you know, even more... <laughs> 
<laughs> even more abused from people, you know. Um, but um, yeah, that's what I was thinking today. I was just thinking about, you know, how the workplace is a place I, I can't go back to. And I understand that there's people who probably doubt that. They they doubt it. Um, I Or they think I'm exaggerating or are they, I'm making this up. I guys said, you know, from the very beginning when I started making these videos, I talked about, you know, I, I was hoping that it would clear up because um, I, I had shit to do. I, I need to seriously get on with my life and get myself stable. Um, but it was very hard because I know I was being baited through like Indeed.com and stuff like that. And so it was getting very traumatizing for me because it's, I wasn't being taken seriously. Like nobody believed me. Nobody believed that. I was somebody who had to literally run for my life. Like I'm only, I'm all by myself. I'm this woman who's like, you know, getting older and older and older and older. And I was desperately trying to find something that I can do to survive. You know what I mean? And, and this is why I felt like, how could people not understand that? But, you know, I understand when people have more than, than like, <laughs> They have more than you do, and they forget. Maybe they forget what it's like to um, have to work or have to be the little guy or, you know, somebody who doesn't have, like, you know, millions of dollars. I remember um, <laughs> I remember when I was working jobs where, you know, I'm making, I'm making okay, but, you know, um, and who knows? They, they could have been perfect because, like I said, everywhere you work, you know, it's a perp, right? But my boss was, like, telling me, you know, if ever you get stressed out, I highly recommend, you know, this particular cruise line vacation, you know? And I'm thinking, oh, my God, you know, they, they don't realize that people in my little income bracket can't afford those sort of vacations. They forget, you know, um, they forget that... <laughs> that people like me, if you don't have a retirement, you're pretty screwed, you know what I mean? And, you know, it, I, you know, it, that's just the way it is, okay? Everybody has to build their own nest in, in the world, and I was fully aware of that. I know people have always thought that, um, that I was the uh, rebellious person because I would ditch school a lot. The reason why people ditch school is because they can't deal with the bullying. That's why they quit. And that's one of the reasons why they have issues in school is because they're being bullied in school. And that's the way it was, okay? Um, I, I didn't have any other, uh, really a whole lot of options growing up. And I had nothing but, <laughs> nothing but interruptions and, and chaotic people all my life. And so I, um, so for something like this to happen to someone like me, it's just like, oh my God. <laughs> You know, but I know that I, people have always perceived me to be um, somebody who was, um, who, who never finished what they started, somebody who never, the reason why, and this is why this whole issue is so circular, why it is so, um, you know, you go round and round in circles, they, they want, people want to play the blame game on you, they want to, you know, get angry for bullying you, and then they want to, like, punish you when you can't function anymore, <laughs> when you can't function anymore, you know what I mean? After the, the you deal with a shitload of views, it, it, it's so it's so crazy, you know what I mean? It's like when did can somebody like me ever, you know, make it? Uh, the sad part is is that <laughs> the sad part is is like you know I, I do the best I can and I make the best of my situation, you know what I mean? I try to make my home comfortable. I don't have the best furniture or anything like that. But I try to make it colorful, you know. I enjoy my little stuffies and shit. <laughs> you know, I I try to make the best of you know my life. Um, but overall, I mean, I, I understand that some people go for a lot of material things, and I guess I've always just been grateful for what I had. Now, mind you, like I said, you know, if I had money, I probably would go. I definitely upgrade. Nobody wants to stay in an apartment, you know, no, nobody does. I think maybe a teenager does for their first place, but after living in apartment after apartment, I've lived in apartments before several times, you know, um, and I could continue doing that, but at least it would have to be like a, a nicer one. But, um, you know, I just, I, I'm just tired of being in the same spot. It's just time for me to do something. And I'm, and I'm somebody who feels as though I have, I don't have the choice of giving up. 
You know what I mean? I know people were always talking about, hey, go get married and stuff like that. It would terrify me to death because, um, like I said, I'm all by myself. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of people who could end up marrying me and then end up abusing me, right? That is something I am always aware of. Aware, I'm completely aware of the possibility of being abused. So what would I do? What's my plan B? And yes, I, the funny thing is, nobody ever realized that I was somebody who cared about my future. Because, you know, maybe when they, I was always around other people, um, they never allowed me to express that. Or, you know, some relationships just don't allow for that. Like, you know, um, I know my um, relationship with um, my dad he would talk about, you know, um, certain things that I could expect when I got older, but, um, you know, not everybody is, I guess, prepared for that sort of thing, but anyway, um, I guess I struggled a lot, you know, and, um, and I've always had to rely on myself, <laughs> rely on myself. I mean, I've dealt with some pretty bad people did not know really who the what the beef was but man i got to tell you my life is pretty weird you know what i mean and um now that i know all of this you know it's always leaving me wondering like okay what what now what what now what what's 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 what am i doing i need to know what i'm doing okay and i'm really having a hard time you know dealing with a lot of the phobias that i experience i experience a lot of weird phobias now um, and it's going to be, it's a result of what I dealt with. Um, I know that somebody called me just recently, um, offering me an interview for an AR position. And I, I've made in the video before <laughs> that I, I can't go back to the workplace. And this is what people are thinking. Oh, they, they always think you're exaggerating. Okay. Um, I'm not exaggerating. I, I honestly cannot go back to the workplace. I, it's one of my fears, one of my phobias, something that will make me very sick if I go back. Um, and I, like I said, you know, I was supposed to follow up with a guy from Patreon and set up a schedule with him on when I need to get help posting this video step by step. And I struggled to turn on a computer or even answer my fucking emails because it causes me trauma. Okay. So I'm dealing with, with like what they call severe um, anxiety relating to, I would call it a form of like post-traumatic stress disorder that related to the mobbing, the gang stalking, the everything else. Because I'm always, you know, I, it, 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 it bothers me. Okay. I, I'm not comfortable with it. Not comfortable with it at all. Um, anyway, um, what else did I want to say? Oh, I wanted to talk about, um, oh, I think people realize and accept, I get that feeling that people fully understand and accept and understand that the last video that I made, hey there, um, kind of resolved uh, the whole family issues because there's always going to be debate. And see, I tend to get caught up in a whirlwind of debate when it comes to my soul tribe, okay? Like if something happens, it seems like it pulls and shifts the energy and the complete something else happens like like okay for example i know that they were um, my family were pulling the strings at one point okay they were making some decisions about my life and encouraging people to adapt that that sort of attitude towards me when it came to making me into a different person um or finding out certain things about me um the reason why is i i'm not comfortable with people that i consider my enemies um, um, what do you call it, you know, infiltrating my space. Um, and I understand like, <laughs> this is very awkward because, you know, people probably have befriended my, um, my relatives, my ex relatives, but I'm not comfortable with it. And, you know, if you do communicate with me, please do not try to be a double agent. I, I can't really deal with that. Um, anyway, um, and that's how you keep infiltration out. Infiltration can be very destructive. This is one of the techniques that they use when you're dealing with a workplace mobbing and community harassment. Um, infiltration happens in the workplace. It happens in your neighborhood. It also sadly, unfortunately happens, can happen in your household. It could turn your husband against you. It can turn your children against you. It can turn your, your dearest, your old grandmother against you. And this is what happens to a lot of people 
in these cases, okay? Um, it, it becomes so, the brainwashing becomes so big that people start thinking that you're something that you're not. Just like people thought that I was, and I, I, I laugh at that. I kind of laugh at it, but I kind of get really, really disturbed by it too. You know what I mean? Um, this whole issue is just, when you think about it on a spiritual level, it's just too goddamn deep. Anyway, but I'm very glad that people understand, you know, how I feel about that issue. Um, like I said, you know, I am dealing with a lot of social anxiety right now. Um, and, you know, like I said, I, I'm, I'm out. Okay, I'm out um, when it comes to um, dealing with that. Um, I know there might be some people who are angry, um, angry with me because they feel as though, um, <clears throat> you know, why, why can't you cooperate? Why can't you just go to this job interview or whatever? Here's the thing, okay, what people don't understand about targeted individuals is they are broken at this point, okay? Like, um, you know, I think in the last few years, I did everything. I even traveled. Like, I even did what I could to get work, okay? I have been fucked over so many times with these people playing with my life, okay? So it's not like, that puts a, uh, that it is very much like, the feel of it is very much like somebody putting a gun to your head. It's how it feels, okay? So um, I am very disturbed by that, being so that I'm aware that I'm a woman who's all by herself, does not have any real protection. Now, like I said, I got a grown ass son. He's very cool with me. He's very protective. He's very, you know, he, he takes care of his mom to the best of his ability, right? But like I said, I would not be able to live with myself knowing that I, you know, relied on my son for the rest of my life. I always knew this. I always fucking goddamn knew this. You know what I mean? Um, people really don't think that I have. Um, because of the nervousness that they caused me when I was a kid, because of the fact that they actually created somebody who stuttered a lot when, when um, I was a kid out of nervousness, knowing that the ball, the shit's going to hit the fan any fucking goddamn minute. Um, you know, I felt, always felt like I was running around, being jittery, nervous, a nervous wreck, <laughs> you know, whatever. Or I'm being blamed for shit that was just unnecessary. Um, and then they see me as an adult. And they start hearing me. So then they go in through this whole thing of denial. No, she can't really be this way. That's not how she is. I remember when I was working over at the farmer's place. Um, me and uh, my boss, we were going somewhere. So we were in the, in the truck where I were talking. And he said something about... Um, now, now I look at it now, I realize that he was a perp, right? But um, he asked me, um, so what books are you reading lately? And I remember saying that I was reading something about um, uh, Adolf Hitler or something like that. Because th that was my reading material, right? <laughs> and he said, that doesn't sound like something you'd read. And then I didn't realize that... Um, <laughs> I didn't realize that this particular person, see, the thing is, okay, the thing is, is that, number one, I was just, I just got hired, right? What the fuck do you know about my reading material? How do you know what I read, right? Um, <laughs> but now I realize, you know, um, that these people were like looking at me and studying me and wondering how the hell that I get to be how I am now. You know what I mean? I've always been this way. It's just I've never been understood. I've never even actually really been listened to. Um, people um, really hated the fact that I would do absolutely anything. Like, if I did anything, people got pissed off. I mean, it was just absolutely sick how um, my family behaved towards me and how they encouraged other people to behave towards me. And, um, and I've basically been running from a lot of sick, mind-controlled people all of my life because I, I will tell you I never for once thought that anything was wrong with me now I do understand there's an explanation for why I am different than everybody else and it makes sense you know what I mean yeah, I, I understand I'm not bloodly related to the Gordon family you know what I mean um it is what it is you know what I mean I I'm not somebody who wants to um constantly dredge everything up but I do want to move forward with my life yeah you know I mean I want to move forward and I want to move forward quickly and I'm trying to figure out what to do and you know I it's it's difficult for me because I've been blotted out 
in places. I've been, my name has been overexposed. You know what I mean? I understand that, you know, I, I just, this just was a fucking nightmare for me. <laughs> it was just a fucking nightmare. <laughs> you know, um, I know I'm, I'm very rare because like, you know, why I, I realize that the decisions that I make in life are very much related to my DNA as I, as I think about it. Um, I think a lot of women in my situation, I remember women telling me like when I, when I was raising my son, uh, this woman, the woman, she's actually a clone, by the way, she, we were talking, we were having lunch one day and she was like, um, you know, if, if I were you, Maria, she goes, I admire you, Maria. And I said, why? She said, well, because you know, if I, if I was in your situation, I, I probably would have just reached out for a guy and ended up getting married and, and then I would have him help me raise my kid. You know what I mean? That was her solution. That's what she would do, okay? And I kept thinking, okay, well, then I'm going to be... here. I got to think about the chemistry of all of that. And I ended up getting married at one time. But, and I do know it was very rough in the very beginning, okay? Um, and obviously, there was an issue about him not, you know, being the child's father and all this other shit. So, there, there's always something. So, I, I, I've I never liked the idea of marriage, especially after I got to be 30. Even before I got married, actually. I didn't like it um, because... Um, I knew that I was somebody who was always running from abuse, okay? Um, because the thing is, people want to change me. They want to change me. They want to um, fix me into being what they want to be. And it's not just me, okay? This is, a, this is the behavior of most people. They nitpick and they expect things from other people that people are not able to give them because that's not who they are, Okay? And then it ends up becoming a goddamn nightmare, fighting, bickering, and then it could get explosive and then right down to like fist fights and whatever. Um, I'm always very protective of myself. You know what I mean? People have their reasons for, and the, the reason why I, I, I was shocked that there is like very little confidentiality in the workplace and, and the fact that they would allow or they allow um, this sort of <clears throat> trafficking. Um, it opened my eyes to like the, the ignorance of it. Um, it. It opened my eyes to, um, um, yeah, it, it, it's wicked. <laughs> it's wrong, you know, um, because I look at so many people who, who, um, who mix, who suffer workplace mobbing. I believe a lot of the people who are homeless probably suffered, suffered at one point workplace, workplace mobbing. Um, they are probably they're obviously outcasts because they don't have family. Yeah, you know, I mean, their their family isn't either talking to them, they're distant towards them. They probably could have may not even have been their family in the first place. You know, <laughs> there's all kinds of weird shit that goes on. And um you know, um I'm just aware of it, you know. And I've tried my very best to throughout my life to um never be a burden to anybody. And I've never wanted to um to for anyone to ever say oh well you know she didn't do this and she didn't do that and there's a lot of things i didn't get a chance to do you know what i mean but like i said i mean i can look back on it and they were there they were there anyway i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video i might make another video later on i'm i'm stalling i'm dealing with issues of turning on my computer and like really getting into like my emails and stuff i know it sounds strange but it is something that makes me feel like um i'm not comfortable with it i have a a form of an, a mental illness not a mental illness to where i can't function on certain levels but i have a mental illness to where it's like related to a social phobia a strong one okay because of this issue okay um so anyway i am going to wrap up my video and i will be back with another video sometime later wait 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 let me just say is there anything else i want to say no, I think that's it. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>